Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video we're going to be looking at what is the bottleneck fallacy. Now, the bottleneck fallacy is a fallacy for inductive logic about the strength of a claim, or rather about fallaciously misrepresenting the strength of a claim. Sometimes called the single source fallacy, the bottleneck fallacy occurs when there is a weak point or bottleneck in a chain of sources supporting a claim, such that the claim is only as strong as the weakest point, but it's fallaciously being represented as stronger. For example, take the claim, the National Enquirer says that 10,000 people saw a UFO yesterday. This claim is weak because the source is a tabloid. While 10,000 people on their own might be fairly reliable, the National Enquirer is not reliable at saying that there were actually 10,000 people. The National Enquirer might be lying or exaggerating the magnitude. So they might be lying about how many people saw the UFO or whether they saw it at all. The claim is only as strong as the weakest link in the series of reasoning. Now, there are several situations in which this can be an issue. In historical research, a particular claim may make its way through the ages through a series of citations. If one of the sources is of poor quality, it might misstate the original claim. And if that is the single source in the chain, if there's nothing else that pulls that original claim from that point into the future, we have a problem. Because all of those future things that were citing that are relying on this weak source, this poor quality source that might be false, leading to what is essentially a game of telephone. The claim is only as strong as the weakest source in the chain. This can also occur when the claim is accurate, but the degree of evidence for that claim is overstated by the number of citations that it appears to have. Imagine that someone does an experiment that shows some claim X is true. And then 30 peer-reviewed journals cite that one experiment to show that X is the case. How much support does X really have? Does it have the support of 30, or does it have the support of 1? Well, there was only one experiment done to show X. 30 people just wanted to talk about it in their articles. So even though it appears that X is well-supported, if you cite all 30 of those journal articles separately, they're all relying on the same source, the same experiment. The claim is only strong as its weakest point. That's not to say the experiment is wrong, simply to say that only one experiment was done. If, on the other hand, there were 25 experiments, separate experiments of, let's say, similar size, showing that not X is the case, and each of those was only cited by one peer-reviewed journal article, there would be more support for not X even though the bottleneck fallacy would make it appear that there was more support for X, or at least their support was around equal. Because there were more of the actual experiments done, whereas the only thing showing X was a single experiment that happened to be cited by a lot of articles. The bottleneck fallacy often shows up in attempts to show evidence for ancient miracles as well. If a holy text says that 5,000 people saw a particular prophet perform a miracle, one might conclude that it must have happened, since 5,000 people couldn't be mistaken. However, this discounts the possibility that the holy text itself is mistaken. And if what you're trying to prove is the accuracy of the holy text by demonstrating miracles, you have a bit of a circular logic fallacy as well. But perhaps the holy text is exaggerating, or it was written well after the event and is only citing a tenuous string of oral tradition to prove that. And so you don't have the strength of 5,000, you have the strength of one book that was written hundreds of years after it happened. These two claims look like they're supported equally, but in fact, one has only a single piece of evidence, while the other has many pieces of evidence to support it. The bottleneck fallacy occurs if you claim that these two have equal support, or if you overstate the amount of support for the one that has only one underlying piece of evidence to support it. Because there are many sources that are citing solely that same piece of evidence. Here's another example, particularly for historical claims. Imagine you're trying to show that a particular person in history said a certain thing. Some claim. You find several sources that support this claim and they're fairly strong sources. However, all of the sources you can find cite another source further back in history, but a single source, though that source is generally reputable. If you claim that you had multiple sources proving this claim, 
you'd be committing the bottleneck fallacy because you're overstating how much support you have for the claim. That's not to say you shouldn't cite all of those strong sources, but to say that three sources independently say that this claim is true isn't exactly accurate because you only have that one strong source that all of those sources are citing. Now further imagine that your strong source back is actually citing a much weaker source. An ancient author that's known to misrepresent their claims or be report things inaccurately or make things up. Now at best you have a single weak source to support your claim. Just because you cited three strong sources right at the front, it doesn't mean that you have three strong sources worth of support for your claim because all of those sources are reliant on some one single weak source back in the chain without a primary source to check if the person actually said what they did or other corroborating sources that could support your weak source you have very little evidence for your claim even though it appears that you actually have quite a bit this is the bottleneck fallacy if someone commits this fallacy, it doesn't necessarily mean that their argument is unsupported, simply that it has less support than it initially claims, or that it's based on fewer or less reliable sources than it initially appeared to be. An egregious example of the bottleneck fallacy is something called cytogenesis, coined by the webcomic XKCD, where a false claim is added to Wikipedia, copied by some careless writer, maybe of a news article or a... Uh, uh, journal article that's not peer-reviewed and not reviewed carefully. And then that writer's article is used to support the false claim on Wikipedia, cite the false claim, keep it in Wikipedia, leading to other slightly less careless writers who look at Wikipedia but then check the sources, citing the claim using that article, further providing more support for it, meaning that you can now cite two or three sources for this claim that there's no underlying source for it. We have generated a false claim and an apparent list of citations, but those citations are cyclical. They only cite themselves. In this case, the underlying source is actually false, but this is masked by the increasingly more reputable sources citing it. If you have a news article that makes something up, Wikipedia cites it, then a journal article cites the news article, Wikipedia gains that support, and then some peer-reviewed journal article cites both of those saying, well, both of these people said it, so it's probably true. That is a case of the bottleneck fallacy, but it's such a bottleneck fallacy because it bottlenecks all the way down to there was no support for the original claim. Let's look at some examples. So John said that 500,000 people saw your dog recite Shakespeare. 500,000 people can't be wrong, therefore your dog probably recited Shakespeare. Even if we accept that 500,000 people could not be wrong, it is very possible that John is wrong. Or John is lying. John isn't reliable. Our claim is only as strong as the weakest link. And right now, 500,000 people isn't the weakest link. John is. 30 articles cite a book from the 5th century claiming that Plato was actually a woman. Multiple sources for the same claim make it more reliable. Therefore, the claim that Plato was a woman is reliable. The book in the 5th century, while old, was not contemporaneous with Plato. So it might be a bad source. Additionally, multiple people citing the same possibly bad source doesn't increase reliability because that source is still just as reliable as it's going to be if five people or if a hundred people cited it. If there were multiple contemporaneous sources citing that claim, you might have a stronger case for it. But if everything funnels back to a single bad source somewhere in the distant past, that's pretty challenging evidence for the claim that there's strong support for that claim. What do you think? What makes a source a reliable source? Are there other instances of the bottleneck fallacy you've encountered? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Kernades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.